So, uh, yeah, I want to share some my thoughts about uh, that his new book, Tibetan Yoga, Principle and Practices. Actually, it's really, really amazing. It covers all types of yoga practice, right? From yeah. six yogas to yeah, Karma six. Mudra, Mahamudra, Ati Yoga, yeah. everything. Yeah, including a kind of uh, introduction to Chulin practices too. So it's kind of like an introduction to all of the, the key practices, uh, just giving a general uh, introduction to why those uh, practices are important in the Tibetan tradition. So the book is actually, it says a principle. So of course, you, it gives like a kind of very extensive um, introduction on Tibetan mm. yoga. Mm. So essentially, it's like theory and practice of the Tibetan yoga practices. So of course, Salung and Trukor, but actually then beyond that, going into the six yogas, you know, Tumo and Gyulu, illusory body, but then Karma Mudra as a way of enhancing the Tumo, and then the, the clear light and the dream yoga, the Poa and the Bardo. And then the last section of the book, which is quite the longest, is actually on the Ati Yoga, on the, uh, the Dzogchen. And it particularly looks at, I think, really the first book to do it in uh, this kind of a format, looking at the physical yogic practices that were used as a support for the, the core fundamental practices of Dzogchen. So looking at the physical yogas in the Korde Rushen and then looking also at the postures that were used in the practice of Tugga, using light and darkness as a support for uh, going beyond the narrative consciousness into the essential nature of the mind and the body. So I will hold his book and I think he should hold my book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll do like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think if we're talking tomorrow about yogis and yoginis, what's really special, what I try to do, at least with this book, is to really present the teachings uh, and the, these practices from the point of view of the non-monastic tradition. So that's why even on the cover, it's showing a female practitioner, a yogini, not a yogi. Uh, this is from an early like 13th century, 14th century wall painting from Toling in Western Tibet. Mm -hmm. So very rarely we see like a female siddha, yogini, sitting in nature with animals. And so I really wanted to emphasize the natural environment, the female practitioner, the non-monastic uh, traditions, because when we compare to what people mostly know about the Tibetan Buddhist Buddhism, they mostly know of the, the, you know, the red Sangha, yeah, the monastic you say tradition. Tibet, everybody says, ah, oh, yes, red monasteries and monks. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's their So I want to emphasize landscape and yoginis. Ah, by the way, the landscape, you have written this uh, book about uh, the hidden lands. Right. We can say, <clears throat> yeah, the enlightenment also is depending on the environment, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, which, and the environment it's, also means for the environment for a yogini is a, is a yogi. He's not yogi only is, through meditation, also yeah. meeting the, yeah, you are like right partner. Yeah, yeah. You know, the partner practice, karma mudra. Yeah. And uh, also being like a special place, like uh, Bayus, mm -hmm. like a hidden Kurland. Yeah. So actually, you can access direct, uh, directly experiences. Yeah. Well, I maybe I won't say it on when we're talking, but actually, when I first time when I asked. Uh, well, well, you're afraid to talk. We well, I'll just mention it, and we can decide people. later whether we want to discuss or not. But uh, I went to Dharamsala to actually find texts about the Bayu, the hidden lands, and so that time, you know, uh, not going she was just there with just like three or four. Uh, you know, his students, and so we were just going around in the taxi, you know, uh, and I asked him about um, really the innermost meaning of the, of the hidden lands, the Bayu. He said, well, it all depends, you know, from one point of view, what most people understand is a place in nature, but in another point of view, it is the, you know, it's the body of, the, of your consort, it's the body of the Yogini from a male point of view. And so this is why Pemaka, he described, is described as the body of Vajrayogini, because actually on an inner level to experience the true meaning of the Yang Sangne, the, young, the innermost secret place of the hidden land, we experience that through the interpersonal yoga practice of Karma Mudra. So this was kind of his inner explanation of, uh, of the Bayu as something that's revealed through uh, the Karma Mudra practice. So this was very, I thought, again, directly relating to the practice we're talking about yogis and yoginis, not monks and nuns, because they don't quite have that same opportunity to experience another dimension 
of their being through that profound coming together of the elements of two beings when they are inter in, indivisible and mm -hmm. inseparable. I have a feeling like this a yogic community, culture. even we don't call it, yeah, yogic culture is kind of coming back, you yeah. know, even we don't call them yogis, yoginis, that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Because we talk Bebe uh, Nenjorpa, Bebe Nenjorma, the hidden yogis and hidden yogis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always don't need to say we are yogis, so we don't mm -hmm. need to show off, right? Yeah, it kind of comes naturally. I think, you know, in the same way we can even look in the... And, uh, yeah, the interest, another interesting part is also there are, there are more female practitioners mm -hmm. than male practitioners. Yeah. So it means the yoginis are coming more than yogis. Right. So somehow, I think it's a kind of yeah, very... It's a natural balance, rebalance. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think, you know, we need to balance. One part, we need to bring the awareness about uh, yogic culture. I think that's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, many people, they don't... You know, when we talk about yoga in the West, yes, Indian yoga. And uh, <clears throat> it's true, many yogas are coming from India, but then Tibetan yogas are different than Indian yoga, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the yoga practitioners are yogis and yoginis. So I think that's why it, it's also, it's an important, you know, now it's an important time that we bring the awareness about uh, mm -hmm. Buddhist yogis and yoginis. And I think one of the great things about that is that mm -hmm. because of all of the popularity of the you say the Indian yoga, the great yoga practitioners are those who seem to be able to put, you know, one foot, you know, around their head. And it's all very much based upon a certain kind of physical uh, prowess. And the beautiful thing about yoga in the Tibetan tradition is just the word, you know, actually the natural state. And it's about to, to what degree are we unified uh, in that state, as you refer to it as sort of the inseparability that the Vajra essence represents so when in the vajra body then there's no all the elements are interpenetrating and that doesn't depend upon you know even if we're missing a leg or an arm you know we can still yeah, yeah, yeah. be great yogis it doesn't matter you know how so perfected the stretched out your mm -hmm. ligaments so are one is more like uh, external yoga yeah one is internal yoga. yeah and i think that's the really the beauty of and like also with the nijam and all of these traditions it's not depending upon having some super you know fit um, flexible body it's about having a super fit flexible body mind so that you can actually adapt yeah, yeah. and adjust and uh, into any situation and that really becomes then the mark i would say of, mm -hmm. uh, of a, of a yeah. real yogini yogi how great keeping that continuity of um, mm -hmm. wisdom and compassion into all actions okay great yeah, anyway Thank that's you. just that so that's practice. about yogis and yoginis and uh, yeah we are happy to meet again in on the sevens yeah which is on the wednesday or thursday we'll meet again and we'll talk about uh, tibetan yoga and uh, healing yoga so one is a big book and one is small book guess what i wrote the small one and guess what and, I'm smaller and, I, than you. and i guess what never be deceived by covers <laughs> <laughs> by the size okay. size doesn't matter <laughs> okay thank you very good